Gemara Masechet Brachot says, a dream can be, not always, but can be one sixtieth of prophecy. What's prophecy? There are several aspects of prophecy. But one aspect of prophecy is that it's talking to God. Meaning it's knowing a little bit of a secret that God is trying to tell you about something that's happening or could happen in the future. So, dreams can be a way that Hashem will communicate to you to tell you about something that could potentially happen in the future. Either to warn you about it, either to warn you about it, or to make you happy about it. So the Shulchan Aruch says, there's a certain dream, most dreams are complete nonsense. Most dreams are just a figment of your imagination. You went to the zoo, you saw an elephant, then later on you had a hot dog, and you know, for lunch, and then later on you read a book. So you went to sleep, and you dreamt that the book is eating a hot dog, but it has an elephant head on it. That's just a figment of your imagination. There's no, nothing there. Most dreams are complete nonsense. But sometimes dreams do mean something. And the Gemara says that they have to follow a certain pattern. If you have a recurring dream, you have the same exact dream multiple times. <laughs> Chabot, Chabot, right here, there's chairs. Chabot, please, please, please. If you're having a recurring dream, you're having a recurring dream, then that's a dream to pay attention to. That's a dream to pay attention to. If you had a one-time dream, more times than not, it's complete nonsense. But if you have a recurring dream, yeah, it's something that you dreamt. Let's say, for example, you dreamt of chas v'shalom, chas v'shalom, lo aleinu lo alechem, you dreamt of a car accident. <coughs> Nothing. It doesn't mean anything. It just means maybe you have anxiety about your driving skills. But now, if you had that same dream two or three times, that's something to pay attention to. You have to go to a Talmud Chacham and ask that Talmud Chacham that you know, and you know that that Talmud Chacham cares about you, to tell you, what does this dream mean? Talmud Chacham is somebody who learns Torah all the time. Not just somebody who learns Torah once in a blue moon. Somebody who knows Torah. But also has to be, should be somebody that cares about you. Because the Gemara says, if that person cares about you, and he's a Talmud Chacham, he will give you positive translation of that dream which also has an effect on the dream itself but if you have a certain type of dream the Shulchan Aruch says that's called a dangerous dream there's a, da- there's a type of dream that's called dangerous what's a dangerous dream if you dream that you lost all your teeth sometimes people have this dream I already know a couple of people that had this dream and one of my students actually heard this I said this in a different lecture maybe it was with you guys maybe with somebody else and uh, I said, the Shulchan Aruch says, if you had a dream that you lost all your teeth, Shulchan Aruch says you have to fast. You have to fast the next day. Really serious fast. No eating, no drinking. Why? It's a very bad sign from heaven that somebody could potentially die, including Chaz Shalom, the person himself. It's a sign that that person needs to do some serious tshuva, some serious act of Kedusha in order to undo this dream. One of my students saw me saying this, heard me say this in a different shiul, and says, I can't believe it. I had a dream a year ago that my teeth fell, but I didn't think much of it. I didn't think much of it. He says a week later, one of his family members died. Rabotai, dreams have a meaning sometimes. Last but not least about dreams is that dreams are one of the ways that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives you joy in this world. Because dreams, when they're good, they're enjoyable. Now do you dream that you fly? It's cool to fly. Because you feel like it's real. It's a dream. In the dream, it's real. So it's cool to fly. It's cool to do all types of things. So dreams are a way for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to give you some type of joy, so much so that if you do not dream for an extended period of time, I believe it's 40 days, then you should take some action to do tshuva. Why? Because that means that there's a kitrug, there's a case against you in heaven where Hashem is lowering your joy. Last but not least, I'm sorry, I forgot. Dreams is also a way for the Satan's wife to make guys lose their olam haba. How so? The Satan's wife is so powerful, she's more powerful than him that we're not allowed to say her name. If you know it, keep it to yourself, please. If you don't know it, it's better you don't know it. Because if you say her name, 
if you're inviting her over. Now, the problem is that when she comes into your dream, she doesn't look like the Satan's wife. She looks like somebody you like. She likes. She looks like somebody you want to like. And she wants to do everything rotten in your mind in order to get you to waste seed. Now, when a guy wastes seed in his dream, even though it's not an intentional sin like he did it when he was awake, nonetheless, it is still considered a sin. Where do we learn it from? Gemara Masechet Avodah Zarah says a man should be careful of the things that he sees in the morning so evil does not come to him at night. What's evil? Gemara says evil is the Satan's wife trying to entice him to waste seed while he's sleeping. We call it in lingo, in the street language, uh, wet dream. He wastes seed and Rabotai Karim, when he's wasting seed, he is creating millions and millions of demons that are going to torture him as much as they possibly can. Not a good idea, which means that a person needs to follow a certain regiment when he's sleeping to sleep on his left side. If he sees a woman in his, in his uh, dream to make sure if he can, and he's trained himself to wake himself up, even if the woman in his dream is his wife, it's still not his wife, it's always the Satan's wife. Point being, Rabotai, the dreams have a lot of meaning. A lot of meaning, we actually can speak hours about dreams, but this gives you a little bit of a synopsis of what they are. B'Shem Hashem Na'asev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha, by uh, the Shurim that we do, myself, Rabbi Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone, You'll be able to share the uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our Cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat